you're getting ready to testify in your medical malpractice trial and you are terrified that you're going to have a brain freeze at some point and simply come out with an answer that says, I don't know. And you're worried about what your lawyer is going to think of you because of your inability to remember something during the course of your trial. Is that really what your attorney is going to think about if you don't know the answer to a question? Come join me for a moment as I share with you some really interesting information. Hi, I'm Cherry Ojinski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. So now you brought a lawsuit against your doctor claiming that he was careless and that his carelessness caused you harm and injury. And your doctor denies all of that. And he says your injuries really are not that bad. He says, you know what? I don't believe any of this nonsense. We're going to have a jury ultimately decide this case. Okay, so two or three years down the road, your case finally comes up for trial. The attorneys have picked a jury and now it's time for testimony to take place. The first witness is called, the doctor whom you have sued, and that takes all day. And now on the second day, you are called as a witness. And you are terrified the night before you're thinking, oh my God, what's going to happen? What will my lawyer think of me if I don't have all the answers, if I don't remember all of the answers? What will my lawyer think? You're so focused on what your lawyer thinks that you're going ahead and getting yourself all worked up, all anxiety prone. Why? Because you're so focused on what your attorney thinks. You're looking to him for approval. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, stop it. Okay? That's not why you brought a lawsuit. You did not bring a lawsuit so that you can worry about what your attorney thinks of you if, in fact, you forget an answer at trial. That's not how it works. That's not how any of it works. In all likelihood, your attorney has taken the time to prepare you for the types of questions he's going to be asking you before you get on the witness stand. He's preparing you. He asks you a series of questions and says, these are the type of questions I'm going to be asking you at trial. And here are the types of questions you can likely be asked during cross-examination. And you say, fine. And you go ahead and go through all the questions and all the answers that he asks. And now you have no problem. But the night before, you're getting all worked up. You're thinking, what if, what if, what can happen here? And now you go into court and you begin testifying. Your attorney asks you lots of open-ended questions. Mrs. Jones, tell us what happened next. What did you do then? What happened next? What conversation did you have with the doctor then? And he's giving you the opportunity to go ahead and get comfortable by answering all of these open-ended questions. And you have no problem whatsoever doing that. And you feel great after a few hours of having that done. Okay, now you take a break and now it's time for the defense lawyer to get up and begin cross-examining you. And you have the worst fears in your mind about this cross-examination. You think he's going to tear you apart. You think he's going to come at you hard-hitting over and over and aggressively go after you. You think his questions are going to be fast-paced, one after the next, after the next, and you're going to have to answer rapid fire. Doo, doo, doo. Guess what? That may happen. And then again, it may not. There are many different strategies an opposing attorney can use when cross-examining a witness. And you won't really know which one is going to occur at the very beginning. In fact, he may use many different strategies during the course of your questioning. So let's go back to the question I raised at the beginning of this video. If you do not know the answer to a question during your cross-examination, can you come right out and say, I don't know? And if you say, I don't know to a particular question, are you worried about what your lawyer thinks? Then again, why aren't you worried what the jury thinks? Why aren't you worried what the judge thinks? If you're spending so much time focusing on what other people in the courtroom are thinking, you're probably not paying attention to the question. You're probably not paying attention to the answer either. And that may be why you don't remember the answer. And if in fact you truly do not know the answer, simply say, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. I don't want to guess because I could be right, I could be wrong. So I'm telling you right now, I just don't recall. Okay, now I'll ask you another question. And you may not recall that one either. So you say, I'm sorry, I don't recall. Now, you may have known the answer a few hours earlier. You may have known the answer a week earlier when your attorney asked you these questions. You may, in fact, have known the answer a month, a year earlier when you gave pretrial testimony. And now the defense lawyer was asking you the same exact question. And you may have remembered it back then. But now as you sit up there on the witness stand being cross-examined, this is a hostile environment. You've never had this experience before. You may simply have that brain freeze and not remember the answer. Do you worry about what your attorney is going to think? No. You worry what the next question is going to be because the attorney is going to try and show that your forgetfulness may in fact be intentional. It may be a ruse to try and get the jury to realize, hey, you're trying to hide something. 
And if you continue saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't recall, to each and every question, and you may even be a bit nasty or short with the attorney by trying to do that, it may give the appearance that in fact you are trying to hide something. So why do I share this great information with you? I share it with you because this does happen from time to time, where a witness forgets something, but then they become so focused on what is the attorney, my own attorney, going to think if I can't answer the question. Does it mean the case is over? Does it mean I've ruined the case? What could it mean for me in my case? Stop focusing on what your attorney is thinking about and focus instead on the question being asked and your answer. You know, I do realize you have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen here in New York and you're thinking about bringing a lawsuit but have not done so yet because you still have questions that need to be answered, what I encourage you to do is pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your legal questions. You know, I do this every single day and I'd love to talk to you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.